Hey there, it's E Squared Photography. I'm Erin. And I'm Emily. And we are here today to keep things simple and fun. Have you ever been to maybe a family session or you're taking photos of a large group of people, but you can never get all of them in focus? Well, we're going to tell you exactly how to do that today. And make sure to stick around until the end because we have a special invite just for you. By the end of this video today, you will be able to show up to your next group or family session and get every single person in focus. And for the best photography tips and tricks, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell for notifications of future videos. And don't forget you guys, every Monday we put out a new YouTube video just for you. So there are three big parts we are going to talk about today to getting those sharp group shots. So you've heard of the word aperture or maybe you've heard of the word f-stop. Those are the same things. We like to use the word f-stop more than we do aperture. Let's talk about what those are. So aperture or f-stop is the opening where light travels through your lens. So if you look at the back of your camera, you're going to see it written with a little f for f-stop in front of it. So this camera is set at an aperture of f 2.2. So cameras or lenses have a variety of apertures they can be set at. So maybe you are set at an f 2.2 or an f 8 and you can change your aperture depending on what you want to be shooting. So when it comes to aperture or f stop we always like to play it on the safe side when setting our aperture. So what does that exactly mean? Well, if we have an aperture that is too low, so let's say a 1.8 or a 1.4 even, and we're taking a photo of a large group of people, eh, probably not the smartest idea. So let's take a look at some examples of what this really means. So in this particular instance, we have a family of five and we set our aperture to a 3.2 or possibly higher if we needed to. In this next photo, we've added even more people in this wedding party. We now have a couple rows of people, so we bumped our aperture up to an F5, or we could go higher. Here's a group of ladies, they're all in a straight line, and we put our aperture at an F2.8. We could also put it a little bit higher if we wanted to. Okay, so just a really quick Bonus tip for you all. So when you are photographing these large groups of people or families or whatever it might be, stop overwhelming yourself with all of these pose ideas. Keep them in the same pose for a while and actually tell them, we're going to keep you in this pose so no need to get out of it right away. Because a natural tendency of people when they are put in a pose is to get out of the pose right away and then you find yourself putting them right back in that pose. So you are going to stay in the same pose and just vary it up, but keep it simple. So when we say vary it up, you can do a couple different things. You can change the way they're maybe putting their hands on somebody's shoulders or grabbing their arm or snuggling in. You could have them look different ways. You could have them look at each other. When we have little kids involved, we say, okay, now we're going to tickle each other and it just gives a whole different look and you're not changing where they're standing. And the big pro to this is that you don't need to change your aperture so much throughout a session. So doing that, you can keep with that same aperture and that's one less thing you have to worry about. The second most important thing when we are dealing with getting sharp group focus is where you're having them stand or how you're having the group stand. Or sit for that matter. Or sit. So let's look at some examples and we'll explain why we did what we did in these images. So this first image here, we have the bridesmaids and you can tell by looking at this image that all of the bridesmaids are in an exact straight line. Their toes are on a straight line. If they were to curve out a little bit, which naturally happens, you're going to end up having some blurry, um, some blurry people. So the the end people might get a little bit of get a little bit of blur to them. So we tell them straight line. Your toes are going to be on a straight line, nice and tight together. That's going to prevent um, images that are not sharp. And in that particular instance with the bridesmaids, to get them to, and to make sure it's in a straight line and that those people on the end are in focus, we actually have the bride, who's usually the center of the group shot, 
lift her dress up a little bit so they can see her toes and her shoes and say, okay, your feet need to be in line with the bride's feet. And now in this next example of the wedding party, the biggest thing here is when you have such a large group, putting them into two rows is almost needed so it doesn't look so awkward in a big, long, straight line. So we put this wedding party into two rows. Now the big thing to do here is, yes, you're gonna shoot at a little bit higher F-stop, but you're gonna tell the back row to get as close to the front row as they can because the closer they are, the more crisp all of the faces are going to be. If you had them quite a bit back, um, just which naturally they do sometimes, you're going to have some um, of the people in the wedding party that are out of focus. Comment below and let us know what is your biggest frustration in general with shooting large groups of people. All right, so the third most important thing in getting these sharp images when you're shooting groups or families is then where do you focus? So let's dive into some examples here. So taking a, a look at this group of brides with her or a bride with her bridesmaids here, we are going to focus on the center person in this photo, which just of course happens to be the bride. Again, in this group shot, these ladies are walking, but we are still going to focus on one of the center people in this photo. When we start to add another row, so now we have two rows, we are always going to focus on somebody in the front that's closest to the center. And in this case, it happened to be the groom, which worked out really well. For this particular family, again, we are going to focus on the, the person in the front and center. And notice in this image how we have them try to get their faces as close as we could to the same plane, which is going to help prevent any sort of blurry image. So when we kind of look at this family photo in general, the little girl in the red dress in the front is actually in the front row, we would say. And the four other family members in the back, because their faces are aligned on the same plane, that really acts as the second row. In this particular photo, it's something fun that we do. The kids are running towards us. We don't care about the parents so much in the background. They might have a little um, blur to them. They might be a little out of focus, but we think that's totally fine because the focus is on the children. So we're gonna focus on them. In this photo here, we are going to focus on the front person. And because there's only two of them, you could pick or choose which one you wanted to focus on. All right, so we really hope this was helpful for you guys today. But the key thing, you guys, is to really keep things simple. So remembering those three pieces when trying to get everybody in focus. It's your aperture, it's how you line them up, and it's where you are focusing. That's it. Now, if you're still frustrated with blurry images or trying to figure out manual mode and all those camera settings, we are inviting you to our free one hour training that is happening in the next few days. So make sure to check out the link below because it's only happening a few times here coming up this week. So grab your seat while you can. We're really excited about it. We dive deep into manual mode. We talk even more about aperture, ISO, shutter speed, all of those fun camera settings to help simplify the process for you. In this free training, we also go over several examples and how to troubleshoot when things aren't quite going the way you want them to go. So you really don't wanna miss this out. So make sure you click that link below. So if this video was helpful for you guys today, make sure to like it, subscribe, and share with a friend so we know to make more videos just like this one. And don't forget to grab your seat inside that free training. And if you don't already, make sure to follow us on Instagram at esquared.photography for even more behind the scenes, tips and tricks, all of that fun stuff. And we will see you next week.